You may find yourself in a situation where your employer decides to make your role redundant. In this situation, you have a right to be consulted. Your employer will send you a letter to say your role is at risk of redundancy and invite you to a consultation meeting. There you will have opportunities to speak to your employer to discuss ways to avoid your redundancy. You'll then be invited to a second meeting for your employer to consider all you have to say before making a final decision. Statutory redundancy payment is calculated based on your year's service. In order to become eligible for statutory redundancy payment, you need to have a minimum of two years' service. And it's calculated on a statutory weekly maximum at the moment, which is £571. This changes on the 6th of April every year, depending on the rate of inflation. Up to the age of 22, you're entitled to half week's pay. Between the ages of 22 up to age of 40, you're entitled to one week's pay. And over the age of 41, you'll be entitled to one and a half week's pay. If you want to find out more about how your statutory redundancy payment is calculated, you can visit the government website. You'll be able to provide your details in terms of your age, your length of service and your salary, and it will calculate your payment for you. If the business closes and your employee is unable to afford to make your statutory redundancy payment, in this situation, you can apply to the Secretary of State for those payments to be made out of the National Insurance Fund. You may have a situation where you've gone through a consultation process and your employer has actually found you suitable alternative employment. In this situation, your notice of redundancy can be retracted. Unfortunately, if you refuse an offer of suitable alternative employment, you can actually forfeit your redundancy payment. So you can actually get £30,000 tax-free when your employment ends and by reason of redundancy. Anything in excess of the £30,000 is taxable. Redundancy payments are not pensionable, so that means your employer does not have to deduct any money for your pension. However, if you want to transfer some of that compensation into your pension fund, you can do so, but it has to be independently arranged. Redundancy can be classed as unfair dismissal if you think that you've been singled out for redundancy because of a protected characteristic. This could be as a result of your age, your sex, disability or race. In that situation, you could, have, you could consider a claim for unfair dismissal and consider whether you have a claim for unlawful discrimination. But in this situation, it's very complex and you should seek advice from an employment lawyer. You have gone through a consultation process and you may feel that your employer has not taken into account every factor to avoid your redundancy. So in that situation, you should um, appeal the redundancy decision and it will be heard by a, another panel who can reconsider all the matters that were said throughout that consultation process. You can also file a grievance. You may think that, well, my actual dismissal was a result of my age, my disability or because of my race or because you lodged a grievance before. It may be victimisation. So in that situation, you lodge a grievance and exhaust the internal grievance process. However, if all else has failed and you need to think about an unfair dismissal claim, you need to consult an employment solicitor who will be able to guide you in the best possible way in order to bring that claim to the employment tribunal.